There are many conspiracy theories pertaining to hidden ancient relics which can be found upon our moon. Conspiracies plague not only the known visit to it, but also the possible past visitation by a now lost civilization. A number of studies, including some here upon our channel, have exposed not only theories but valid proofs to support the hypothesis of ancient ruins not only being present on the moon, but ancient lunar ruins having actually been visited in secret operations by NASA and other space agencies. Not only aware of said sites, but accused of studying them in secret. However, a discovery has been made which has seemingly been a lot more difficult, apparently impossible to keep concealed. Thus, it has been exposed after having been discovered by a group of intellectuals at the Baylor University featured within a study published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. They combined data from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory GRAIL, and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter LRO. After finding a huge blob lurking over a hundred miles beneath the South Pole, it can basin. Imagine taking a pile of metal five times larger than the Big Island of Hawaii and burying it underground. That's roughly how much unexpected mass we detected," said Peter B. James, assistant professor of planetary geophysics at Baylor University. The basin near the bottom of our sole natural satellite is an oval-shaped crater several miles deep and up to 1,242 miles wide, the largest found upon the Moon. Located upon the Moon's far side, also known as the dark side, it never faces the Earth permanently concealed from the world, it's an ideal place for future investigation by secretive agencies, as the far side would make an ideal location for any base development that one wished to keep hidden from the world. However, the metal object, which is of an incredible size, is yet to be identified, and if it has been found already by secret intelligence upon Earth, it has until now remained unmentioned, and as far as anyone knows, unstudied. One of the explanations of this extra mass is that the metal from the asteroid that formed the crater is still embedded in the moon's mantle, said James, adding that the crater is believed to be 4 billion years old, almost as old as Earth itself. This means that if this was indeed left by a craft, the beings who made it would now, if still in existence, be unimaginably more advanced than the modern man of Earth, and could, in all possibility, still be visiting our solar system. Was this crater created by a metallic craft? If so, who were these beings? Were they interdimensional or merely interstellar travelers? It is an anomaly, like many others within our solar system which we find highly compelling. Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings, many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash and that the US government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft and have been busily attempting to reverse engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers who say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. Since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of US government, have begun to release hundreds of files, including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians testimonies in satellite and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft, often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos. These events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming evidence to suggest that these sightings were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, 
but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools, two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies, this due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggests. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting it down to mass hysteria. The witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur. Furthermore, supporting their claims, other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, 1966, students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery-green saucer-shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared, climbed at speed, and departed towards the northwest. Some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the U.S. government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth which we find highly compelling. There is a very interesting patent recently acquired by the U.S. Navy, one with the potential capabilities to fulfill or rather stage a conspiracy theory, which has circled the web and books alike for decades. That being a false flag alien invasion. What's more, this patent also includes a technology that could amplify a voice over a vast distance, as if one were hearing the voice of God himself. It is a laser technology, whose invention, release, and patent all made under the possible guise or actual real-world advantageous purposes in its military applications, it creates a heat-seeking deterrent, or more specifically, a holographic craft, not only derailing said heat-seeking missiles, but could also explain many of the recent military UFO sightings, as this technology has potential only limited by the projectable power of the technology itself. Anything could seemingly appear in the sky as if real. If you add to this the ability to convey a voice over a vast distance, this technology could indeed be used to create a mass false flag incident, in particular a mass UFO sighting, or an attempt to fake a rapture within religious sects. The nefarious possible uses of this technology is wide-ranging. Yet one saving grace is the U.S. Navy's declaration of the ownership of such technologies, a move we find somewhat reassuring. Yet, as always, this new patent is not the only reason for the creation of our video today. For although many, if not all UFO sightings now, can be written off as a possible holographic operation, it does not explain their presence within ancient art. The testimonies and compelling evidence put forth by remote tribes, most notably the Dogons, and their reoccurrence and claim visitation of Earth throughout history, even into the Renaissance, present within certain masterpieces, not to mention the curious illustrations made in the stones of Mesoamerica, all of which predate this technology by centuries, and in some cases millennia. Thus, the question remains. Are we alone? A question which we find highly compelling. Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings, many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash, and that the US government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft 
and have been busily attempting to reverse-engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers, who say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. Since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of U.S. government, have begun to release hundreds of files, including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians, testimonies in satellite and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft, often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos. These events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming evidence to suggest that these sightings were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools, two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies, this due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggests. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting it down to mass hysteria. The witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur. Furthermore, supporting their claims, other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, 1966, students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery-green saucer-shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared, climbed at speed, and departed towards the northwest. Some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the U.S. government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth which we find highly compelling. Many people believe that the brightest human of our modern age was not in fact Einstein, but was actually a man who died penniless and alone with only his pigeons for company. A man who went by the name Nikola Tesla. When Einstein was once asked how it felt to be the smartest human being on Earth, he famously retorted, I don't know, you will have to ask Nikola Tesla. Throughout Tesla's life, he invented many things which have been of tremendous value to humanity. Yet many still believe that his most valuable of inventions were suppressed, whisked away into secret vaults at the time of his death. A life's work postulations, theories, hypothesis, experiments, and inventions, all concealed from the world, hidden with the motive of protecting a status quo which is moved and shook by some extremely powerful individuals. Individuals whose empires have slowly but surely gained a stranglehold upon the resource distribution, and indeed the technological advancement of mankind as a whole. Technological advances in communication and travel have only extended these tentacles of control across the globe. Nikola Tesla often spoke of an invention which he claimed would save the world, a machine making energy free for all, yet, alas, for some, this particular area of his work is not our main item of interest tonight, but rather his possible experience of a close encounter with aliens and his subsequent invention which became famously known as an IFO. He eventually gained a patent on the peculiar aircraft which he called the world's first flying saucer. 
Interestingly, the interior design of the flying saucer matched that of descriptions made by some who have claimed to have seen a UFO from the inside with a discoidal capacitor that he believed was of sufficient enough to provide enough thrust for the craft to fly. The design included other inventions which he claimed would have allowed the pilot complete control over the direction of the craft. Tesla even decked out the interior of the ship with flat-screen television screens and external video cameras for the pilot's blind spots. However, although the patent was indeed granted, the craft lacked a primary power source. Whether or not Tesla had actually developed this and kept it secret is unknown. Clearly a sophisticated and well thought out craft which has conveniently slipped into the archives of history, or quite possibly, black projects involving secret aircraft developments by the American government. Where the idea for this came from is unknown. However, author Tim R. Swartz, along with many other researchers and even Tesla himself, claims that he was once contacted by aliens via transmissions from outer space. According to Swartz's book, The Lost Journals of Nikola Tesla, Tesla at one point was developing a powerful radio antenna designed to monitor thunderstorms in Earth's skies. While testing the device, Swartz claimed that Tesla overheard radio transmissions he believed were actually extraterrestrial communications. Quote, he wondered at the time if he wasn't listening to one planet greeting another, as he put it. From that point on, it became somewhat of an obsession of his to build better and better radio receivers to try to see if he could repeat what he heard. He got to the point where he claimed that he was actually receiving voice transmissions. He said it sounded just like people talking back and forth to each other. He made notes saying that he was actually hearing intelligent beings from another planet talking to each other, although he didn't know what language they were speaking, but he still felt he understood them." End quote. Swartz claims that the book was written using sensational data obtained from the inventor's most private papers, kept under wraps by the military and big business concerns of America. Regardless of the actual facts surrounding the origin of the IFO, Tesla was undoubtedly a remarkable human being, one who gave the world some remarkable things. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. A few years ago, it was revealed that a small meteorite discovered within Sri Lanka, may in all possibility contain the fossilized remains of legitimate alien life. Fossils of animals that originate from a very different place within our vast universe to anything we have ever witnessed. Minutes after a large fireball was seen by a number of people over Sri Lanka on 29 December 2012, a large meteorite disintegrated in the sky, falling into the village of Arganwila. The retrieved meteorite was then sent for studies at the Buckingham Center for Astrobiology and Cardiff University, both within the UK. It has since been noted that the general characteristics of the meteorite bear a striking similarity to those that fell over Denmark on January 17, 2009. This meteorite was identified as arising from an extinct cometary fragment within the Torrid complex. It has thus been associated with Comet Enki. In the early part of this century, it was declared that fossils found within the meteorite center did indeed appear to be authentic remnants of the first alien life officially discovered here on Earth. However, predictably, the investigations were stonewalled by skeptics, stating that the fossils were nothing but mere contamination which had occurred here on Earth. Since then, although public interest has fizzled out, a tremendous amount of research has been undertaken in an attempt to establish the fossil's true origins and ultimate authenticity. This research has resulted in a detailed report reviewed and published within the Journal of Cosmology with an opening statement as follows. We report the discovery, for the first time, of diatom frustules in a carbonaceous meteorite that fell in the north-central province of Sri Lanka on 29 December 2012. Roughly translated, this means that we have officially discovered fossilized alien life. It continues, Contamination is excluded by the circumstance that the elemental abundances within the structures match closely with those of the surrounding matrix. There is also evidence of structures morphologically similar to red rain cells, which may have contributed to the episode of red rain that followed in the days after the meteorite's entry. The new data on fossil diatoms provide strong evidence to support the theory of cometary panspermia." End quote. 
panspermia is the theory that life is spread throughout the universe upon meteorites. Mass catastrophe occurs upon a life-rich planet, the event sending fragments of the planet, each containing the seeds of life, deep into space. These seeds then float across space. Some, like a seed from a tree caught on the breeze, may be lucky enough to land in a location capable of sustaining them, thus spreading life throughout the cosmos. It is a theory relative to the spread of life which is seen from seeds on the wind. Reports of microfossil discoveries in meteorites have a long and complicated history. Early claims of microfossils and carbonaceous meteorites by Klaus and Nagy in 1961 were quickly dismissed as contaminants. Pollen grains were often mistakenly attributed to microfossils. However, this new study, and the evidence thereof, is now undeniable. And although these tiny creatures are so small they cannot be seen by the naked eye, they harbor the power to impact all of our perceptions about our universe in a profound way. They will inevitably shape our Earth, and indeed acceptance of the fact that we are, officially, not alone.